Welcome to Electron Line, and now let's take a look at the graph for velocity as a function of time. And uh, this is, of course, for our third example. We're tracking an airplane in position and velocity. The uh, black points, the black data points, are measured values. Notice the measured values are kind of erratic. Uh, it went from 280 to 282 to 285, then to 286. So there's definitely a lot of variation in the measured values. The predicted values, we're assuming a constant acceleration of 2 meters per second squared. Of course, that's just a prediction. That's not, not necessarily correct, as acceleration will change as the plane maneuvers. And, but at the time, the prediction would be from 280 to 282, 284, and 286. But the Kelvin filter smooths that out. It puts a certain weight to the prediction, a certain weight on the measured values, depending upon how erratic they are, and it zeroes us in to a value that is more realistic. Notice the Kalman filter velocities. Since both the predicted and the measured values were at 282, the Kalman filter value is also at 282. But then there's a big jump in the measured value. The Kalman filter moderates that and puts the estimated value at 284.3. And then the, the measured value goes back to the same as the predicted value. The Kalman filter follows but doesn't follow it immediately and zeroes in at 286.2 for the Kalman filter value. You can see how the Kalman filter brings it back in, but it deviates just a small amount from the predicted values, then zeroes back in, not quite to the same predicted and measured value, but at least it didn't get moved erratically because that unusual measured value that was far away from what you would normally expect or predict. The Kalman filter is just for that purpose to make sure that the Kalman filter values will fall right in line to where the most probable places and most probable velocity will be of the item that you're tracking. And that's why Kalman filters are so great and they work so quickly. Even after three rounds you can see how nicely the Kalman filter velocity zeroes in to the probably the correct value. And that's why we use the Kalman filter.